Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein, and today I'm going to show you what's called Descartes' method of normals, which can be used to find the slope of a tangent line uh, at a point on a curve. Now, this is a very important problem in uh, calculus, and we do it today with what's called a derivative, and it only takes a few seconds to answer this question. Well, Descartes in uh, 1637 recognized the importance of this problem, and he even wrote in his geometry book, quote, and I dare say that this not only is the most useful and most general problem in geometry that I know, but even that I have ever desired to know. So he was interested uh, in finding what's called the slope of the, or the equation of what's called the normal line. The normal line um, is the line that's perpendicular to the curve at a particular point. Here I've got the parabola, y equals x squared, and I'm going to use the point 3 comma 9. So the normal line looks like this. It's perpendicular to the curve. Now the curve is not a line, it's a curve. So um, what we mean by perpendicular is that it's perpendicular to the tangent line at that point. And I'm going to show you a very clever method of how he came up with that uh, normal line. Modern methods use the derivative, which is uh, derived from a, a process invented by Fermat based on infinitesimals. Now, infinitesimals are a little bit uh, dangerous to work with because those are very small numbers that we treat like zero when it's convenient to treat them like zero, but we then treat them uh, not as zero when it's convenient to not treat them as zero, so uh, it took a long time to um, get all the rigor uh, to use that method and trust it. Well, here was Descartes' idea. His idea was, since a, um, a circle um, uh, the radius of a circle is tangent to a tangent line to that circle. So if we could somehow fit a circle inside this parabola, and if we could sort of figure out where the center of the circle would have to be so that it just touched the parabola, then the radius of that circle would be the normal line, and the uh, line perpendicular to that radius would be the, the tangent line. Well, this is a pretty tricky question because we need to find the center of the circle. We don't know that. Um, he's going to put the x-coordinate of the center at, at zero. So he's going to assume it's on the axis of symmetry for the parabola. And he is going to draw in um, a couple of auxiliary lines, and I'm going to show you what their purposes are. This is this little sort of right triangle here formed by the... Um, formed by the, the point at the end of the normal line, the point that we're using to find uh, tangent to, and this point over here. Okay, I'm going to show you the details of how he does this now. Okay, we're going to call the point uh, that the normal line hits the axis of symmetry uh, 0v for now. And we're going to try to calculate out what the exact value of v would have to be. Uh, I'm going to call the length of the normal line S. And we don't know either of these things right now, so it seems like there's really not uh, a lot of information here. Um, the length of, in this little right triangle here, the length of this bottom side is 3. That's because the, the point is 3, uh, is 3 comma 9. So for one thing, the, um, oh, and this length if this length here is v, and this length here is 9, because the, the height of this point here is, uh, is, is, is 9, is it 3 comma 9, then this little small length here would have to be um, v minus 9. Now, because this thing is a right triangle, we could set up one relationship, which is that by the Pythagorean theorem, s squared is equal to 3 squared plus v minus 9 squared. Um, I could simplify that a bit. s squared equals 9 plus v squared minus 18 v plus 81. 
And I can even simplify that a bit further to say s squared equals v squared minus 18 v uh, plus 90. And we will keep this fact uh, handy for, uh, we'll keep this fact handy for later, plus 90. Now, since this circle has center 0 comma v and radius of s, the equation for the circle is going to be x squared plus y minus v squared equals s squared. There's a lot of variables here, x, y, v, s, but watch what happens. When I expand this out, I get x squared plus y squared minus 2vy plus v squared. And remember, we already have this relationship that s squared can be replaced with v squared minus 18v plus 90. Now, now there are a lot of variables here. And one way I'm going to eliminate some of them is using the relationship of the parabola. Since y equals x squared is the equation of the parabola, this uh, x squared could be turned into y. I'm going to move everything from the right over to the left, and a couple of things will happen then. Minus 2vy. For one thing, the v squares will cancel out. And then I'll get plus 18v minus 90 equals zero. Uh, when I simplify this thing further and put it in uh, decreasing powers of y squared, I get y squared plus 1 minus 2v times y plus 18v minus 90. Now, since this, uh, this, is, th this is the equation you would solve to figure out where the circle intersects the uh, tangent line. Well, we want it to intersect just once. And that happens if, if you have a quadratic equation. If the discriminant equals 0, there will be just one solution. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to set the discriminant equal to 0. So I say when is 1 minus 2v, that's b squared, minus 4 times a times c. When does that equal zero? Well, that's going to become a quadratic equation, which, when you fully simplify out, becomes 4v squared minus 76v. Sorry, 76v uh, plus 361. You can work out the details there yourself. Equals zero. Well, that thing factors to 2v minus 19 squared equals 0, uh, which means that, move over here, that 2v minus 19 has to equal 0, or v has to equal 19 over 2. And now I've located the actual height of that point. Well, if that's the height of the point, then I can use that to work out the slope of the normal line and then the slope of the tangent. So the slope of the normal line is the slope of the line between 0, 19 over 2 and 3, 9. And right here I've worked out the slope of the normal line ended up being negative 1, 6. Uh, that means the slope of the tangent, which is the negative reciprocal, would be just 6. And that's the answer to the question. And nowadays we do it with derivative and it's much quicker but it relies on these infinitesimals, which at that time were not uh, fully trusted, whereas this method did not rely on infinitesimals at all. Um, I'm going to do another tutorial where I'll show you a few more examples, one with an ellipse and one with a hyperbola. But I hope you've enjoyed learning about Descartes' method of normals, which can be used to find the tangent to a curve. This method is not very flexible, but it works pretty nicely for this example. Thanks for watching.